Hey, I'm Kevin, one half of the Dark Windows Podcast. Join myself and my co-host, Kevin, every week. We bring you an episode ranging anywhere from aliens to war crimes, cryptids to history, and some of the craziest monsters on two and four legs. We have well over 200 episodes available wherever quality podcasts are sold. We also have a Patreon where we're closing in on 100 episodes. New episodes drop every Friday morning, and just remember that little E next to the description means we're probably not for everybody. Just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean the dark can't see into you. Aids of Radio. You are listening to Texas History Lessons, a slow walk through Texas history made in Texas by a Texan for everyone everywhere. Welcome to Texas History Lessons. I'm Michael. And we're going to take a look today at some of the many, many resources that are available for you to dig into Texas history and beyond. There are so many fascinating things to learn about the history of Texas and the myth and the mystique of Texas that are tied to it. I'll be getting back to regular Texas history lessons pretty soon. But I want to encourage everyone to do themselves a favor and go beyond what I share on the podcast and do some research into something you are interested in for yourself. And with this episode, I will be sharing some great resources that can help you in your quest to explore the past. Now, for as long as I can remember, if you wanted to access a lot of important historical resources, you would have to either be able to buy a copy, which can be very expensive at times, Or you would have to have access to a really good library, especially a college or university library, to use them. The increased availability of information available on the Internet is revolutionizing the study of history and making it possible for people like me that live quite far away from any of these resources to access things that used to be almost impossible. There are a lot of great resources today available for everyone who wants to learn more on their own about Texas history. And I'm going to discuss quite a few of them in a little bit, but let's start with one that I'm very excited about using. One of the contributors to the survey that I didn't have the chance to include in the first part that I've already discussed in another episode is involved with the creation of this set of resources. It's called the Texas History Trust. And you can find it by just searching for that name on the internet. Enter it into your Google or whatever you use. Or just use the web address texashistorytrust.org. The Texas History Trust is working on supplying us with many, many of these tools. Now, the mission of Texas History Trust is advocating, quote, for Texas history based on historical record and to provide the public with the source material and context to understand the history of this land. The Texas History Trust was founded by Michelle Haas and Mark Pusateri. I hope I pronounced their names correctly. The inaugural board of Texas History Trust consists of academic and lay historians, Texas history book publishers, and nonprofit professionals committed to the facts and dedicated to fostering appreciation for our historical record. Now, before launching Texas History Trust, they were involved with a publishing house they started back in 2006, Copano Bay Press. And Copano Bay's purpose was to keep firsthand accounts of Texas history in print. They have published more than 50 titles that would have been hard to find and hidden in obscurity. Among the many books that you can find on their website or a book that actually an aunt gave me, 1919 The Storm, Centennial Edition by Murphy Gibbons and Jim Maloney, Avery Carlson's A Banking History of Texas, Edgar Freeman Smith's A Saga of Texas Land and Oil, John Camden West's A Texan in Search of a Fight, Charlie Seringo's classic A Texas Cowboy. Uh, there's also the Diary of William Fairfax Gray, At the Birth of Texas, a version of Billy Dixon's autobiography is available. 
and the list goes on and on, including other books like Chester Newell's History of the Texas Revolution and John Joseph Lynn's 50 Years in Texas. You can go check out what's available there. Now, these are just a few of the nice printed editions that they have available. They also sell a nice selection of historical Texas maps that I love, including John Bachman's Bird's Eye View of Texas from 1861 that I comment on in a currently unreleased episode on the history of Galveston. That'll be coming out in the future. In addition to all of these great items, they also offer a variety of also nice historical prints to decorate your walls, including Julian Onderdonk's Chili Queens at the Alamo, John Gasby Chapman's Colonel Crockett, 1834, and Henry Arthur McArdle's Dawn at the Alamo. Now, they are also active in something that I will be looking at in a future episode, the controversies that often arise around history, and especially Texas history, and the ongoing fights and divisions that distract from our need to just focus on history. They are active in speaking out against historical societies, university history departments, and authors who, as they put it, quote, warp Texas history based on feelings, not the historical record. With that in mind, they created Texas History Trust to, quote, join like-minded Texans together to advocate for an honest portrayal of history. Some people might not like some of the things they speak out against or for or the way they present it. But they have the right to do this, and it's because they care about history and the history of Texas. I will admit that I may not always agree with some of what they say at times, and that's okay. A lot of the time, I do. Other times, I learn something from them that I wasn't aware of, and that is important. The key is to listen, think, and work together to promote a better understanding. There is room for lots of different perspectives, but there is not room for bad, lazy, or disingenuous scholarship. I do believe that they are sincere in their love of Texas history, and I admire the lengths to which they have gone to make these hard to access materials available for everyone through Texas History Trust. The thing they offer that I really love is what they call the Taproot Project. It is their ongoing effort to digitize the root documents of Texas history. The website for Texas History Trust says, the more we know, the stronger we are. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And that is a statement that I can get behind 100%. And it's my goal too, to find out more and strengthen our understanding of the past. They stress that the focus should be on the facts and the citation of sources. The taproot puts the sources at our fingertips, no matter where we are. And when I first learned about this project, I couldn't hardly believe it. I've been searching the internet for a lot of these very important books and documents. And they are, a lot of them are available. But it is often not that easy to access them. It's not easy to use them. The sites they're available on aren't necessarily very user-friendly for doing research. And I'd already had several copies of some of the books or parts of the books that they offer. But my version's are also not that easy to work with and require a lot of checking and reformatting if you want to print something out or pull a quote. The Texas History Trust digitized resources takes away a lot of the headache and reduces the time it takes to dig through them with the search feature. They began by releasing the muster rolls of the Texas Revolution, the Texian Army, volunteers, and the militia. And that's a very useful resource. Next, they made available the full text of Carlos Castaneda's seven-volume Our Catholic Heritage. Now, this is the best guide to three centuries of Spanish and Mexican Texas. And this set of books is a masterwork of early Texas history, and it is an essential resource. If Castaneda's name sounds familiar, then you have probably heard of the University of Texas at Austin's flagship research library, the Perry Castaneda Library. Carlos E. Castaneda lived from November 11, 1896 to April 3, 1958. And in those years, his historical work, according to Humanities Texas, quote, changed how we think of the Southwest. He told the story of the Texas-Mexico borderlands as one of shared culture and heritage. 
rather than conflict and division. He worked at the University of Texas at Austin as a professor from the time he earned his doctorate there in 1932 until his death. His 1928 book, The Mexican Side of the Texan Revolution, rejected the idea that the revolt simply pitted Anglo-Americans against Mexicans. Instead, Castaneda showed how the revolution was a struggle of a diverse group of rebels, Mexicans and Anglos, fighting against dictatorship. The masterpiece, seven-volume Our Catholic Heritage in Texas, documented the important Hispanic history of Texas when the state's Mexican-American population was marginalized. And thanks to the Texas History Trust, you can access and search this work anywhere you have access to the Internet. The next addition to the project were all six volumes of the papers of Mirabeau Bonaparte Lamar, the second president of the Republic of Texas. And this is another massive and very useful resource, containing not only Lamar's collected writings, but the historical data he himself was collecting and notes he made about history as well. As if this already wasn't enough to keep you quite busy for quite a while, they next made available eight volumes of the writings of Sam Houston, 1813 to 1863. And there are some good biographies of Houston out there, but nothing beats reading the pieces in this collection of his own words and his own writings. And I was already overwhelmed by these amazing collections. And then Texas History Trust made available something that I used to have to drive over an hour to get access to. The five-volume set of Indian Papers of Texas, 1825 to 1916. I have used these volumes before in researching the early Texas Indian affairs and specifically the activity of several important and at times very significant Delawares that were quite active in Texas and often in the service of Texas in the United States in dealing with other Texas native peoples. Most recently, Texas History Trust made available yet another extremely important set of papers the 10 volumes of General J.A. Matthews' papers of the Texas Revolution. Now, back in the 60s and 70s, I believe, Matthews compiled and transcribed all of the known orders, letters, and reports of the Texas Revolution. Texas bookman and publisher John H. Jenkins also helped by annotating the compilation, and it was published by Matthews' Presidial Press in 1973, this is a massive work. They all are. And it is the most comprehensive reference work on the Texas Revolution. There's nine volumes. Volume one goes from January 1st, 1835 to September 30th, 1835. The second volume is covers October 1st, 1835 to November 26th, 1835. November 27th, 1835 to January 13th, 1836 is in volume three. January 14th, 1836 to March 5th, 1836 is Volume 4. Volume 5 covers March 6th, 1836 to April 20th, 1836. April 21st, 1836 to June 3rd, 1836 is Volume 6. And Volume 7 is June 4th, 1836 to July 21st, 1836. And then Volume 8 is July 22nd, 1836 to September 23rd, 1836. And then Volume 9 covers... September 24th, 1836 to October 24th, 1836. And then it also has an addenda of various dates as well as Dr. Fields' Three Years in Texas, the Journals of the Consultation of 1835, and the Journals of the Convention of 1836. And Volume 10 is an index. But the cool thing is, yeah, that index is useful, but all of the nine volumes are searchable online for keywords that you are looking for, and that makes it that much easier. It's a massive amount of information. It's truly an astounding amount of information to dig through, and you can really get a better understanding and a clearer picture than you can get from somebody else's accounts of what went on. And from what I understand... This is just the beginning, and I personally can't wait to see what 
Texas History Trust gifts us with next. I can't overstate how unbelievable it is to have these resources so readily available. And it takes a lot of work and dedication to make these resources available for us to use. Michelle Haas told me in an email that she sat and scanned every page herself. And these are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of pages in these books. It's lots of detail. And then she collated each volume, did test searches and on and on. An astounding amount of work that she put into it. And she said, quote, as a researcher, I wanted the interface to be as painless and user friendly as humanly possible. The less friction there is between the user and the information, the more we can encourage Texas history research. And she calls the Taproot Project her baby. I really appreciate what they are doing in their projects here. Now, as if that's not enough to lose yourself in going into the past, another extremely valuable resource that I encourage you to use is almost too good to be true as well. It's called the Portal to Texas History. One of the schools I went to, the University of North Texas, and its libraries began planning the Portal to Texas History back in 2002. And it is, quote, a digital gateway to historical materials from private collectors and collaborative partners, including libraries, museums, archives, and other historical groups. There's a lot of support for the project across the state, and it received a telecommunications infrastructure fund grant from the state of Texas to get started. And it was online by the end of 2004. It then had five collaborative partners and over 6,500 digital images. It has, to say the least, grown a lot since its inception. The Portal to Texas History started providing a variety of materials for teachers in 2005 with its Portal Services for Educators. And with assistance from the National Endowment for the Humanities, in 2007 they began digitizing Texas newspapers for the National Digital Newspaper Program. They also established the Texas Digital Newspaper Program to assist communities whose newspapers were not in the scope of the NDNP. Every year, the number of partners, funding, and content have grown. It added its one millionth. I'll repeat that. It added its one millionth item in 2018. And by 2019, the portal has grown to offer more than 12.7 million digital images from some 408 partners. People all over the world visit the portal to Texas history every month. The collections are visited over a million times a month now. Every month, visitors from around the world use the online collections more than a million times. By 2021, it had been accessed by users over Let's see, I think that's 100 billion times. That's a big number since 2009. In an article in the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, Dr. Light T. Cummins said, It's bringing the archives of Texas to the desktops of students and teachers all over the world. It is taking the historical profession in Texas by storm. And I'll add that the wealth of information is also astounding, and there are many ways you can specialize your searches to track down information you need. Had I had this when I was writing my master's thesis, I would have had an astounding amount of more information to sift through and use. For something of this magnitude, it took a lot of work by a lot of people, including many students at the university. The portal has also been sustained by the work of hundreds of graduate and undergraduate assistants. A lot of work these people have put in in digital imaging, metadata creation, editing, graphic design, administrative support, and reference. And as the website for the portal says, without their energy, enthusiasm, and hard work, the portal could not continue to grow. 
there were a number of people that have been behind it. The with the vision of it was credited to Kathy Nelson Hartman, Mark Phillips, and Drianna Belden, and a number of people have been involved with content development, infrastructure support, metadata, and just sheer production of content and programming and research and creating the resources for educators part of the portal. The portal to Texas History's partners include private and family collectors, as well as institutions such as libraries, museums, archives, churches, and historical commissions. The materials this collective have made available to us amounts to a vast and rich scope of content. And at the time of this recording, in early 2023, the Portal to Texas History had offered 2,034,730 total items. There had been 130 million. 259,318 total uses in the past 35 days that I looked at this information. Several hundred, if not a thousand uses were probably by me researching for this podcast. It, it just as well could have been called the portal to Texana because if you recall the discussion of Texana in the last episode, it offers materials from folklore and more that fill the requirements for that term. As the portal says on its website, hundreds of years of Texas cultural heritage exists in the physical holdings of communities across the state. The portal seeks to digitize originals, preserving and presenting online copies for the long term. Doing so highlights hidden collections, builds statewide connections, and provides access to you regardless of the time or your location. Like Texas History Trust, these two resources alone are enough to fill your time and keep you occupied digging and learning about the past. And it it really is an astounding amount. You can do a, uh, for example, you can do a keyword search for Trinity River, which I I wrote uh, my master's thesis on the development of it for several uses since settlement. And it comes up with thousands of hits that you can dig through from maps and pictures and newspaper articles and books and different texts that are available. It, it really is a very extremely useful thing that I wish I had access to back then. Maybe not. I would have probably never been able to finish writing it. I would have just kept digging and digging, researching, and researching. And to go on, the portal to Texas history has... 741 collections at this time shared by 476 partners from Abilene Christian University to the Zula B. Wiley Public Library in Cedar Hill and they cover all kinds of topics like agriculture, architecture, arts and crafts, business, economics and finance, education, government and law, immigration, landscape and nature, literature, military and war, people, places, religion, science and technology, social life and customs, sports and recreation, and the time periods cover all of time that's recorded that's been stored here. It has sections on the Texas landscape, the first Texans before 1519, the European explorers in Texas from 1519 to 1689, the Spanish period from 1690 to 1821, Mexican Texas from 1821 to 1835, has Information on the Texas Revolution, 1835 to 1836. There's lots of great resources and information on the Republic of Texas, 1836 to 1846. Covers the period of annexation, slavery and antebellum, Texas culture, the Texas frontier, Civil War and Reconstruction era, the cattle boom, the New South period, populism, progressivism, the Great Depression. There are over... 800,000, approaching a million newspaper resources available. Over 431,000 photographs, 144,000 plus scripts, 94,000 plus videos, 83,000 maps, 54,000 letters, and these are just rounded numbers. There's 25,000 plus journals, magazines, and newsletters available, 18,000 
and more patents, over 15,000 legislative documents, over 11,000 pamphlets, over 11,000 reports on different things. There are over 10,000 technical drawings, close to 8,000 legal documents, over 7,000 books, 6,743 postcards can be seen. And then there's another category of over 6,000 physical objects, over 5,000 sound files, over 4,000 clippings. There are 1,361 yearbooks available, 963 pieces of art, another 868 images. It goes on and on and on. 335 posters. It's pretty impressive to say the least. I mean, it even has 22 musical scores and notations. It's 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 crazy amount of valuable tools and resources for everybody to use for free. And so the portal to Texas history, like the Texas History Trust, really does provide some really valuable, significant resources for everyone interested in Texas history. Now, if that's not enough, and I'm not going to even touch on everything that's a good resource available. It, there are so many out there. I'm just going to try to hit some of the ones that are especially great. Another very important resource or tool available is provided by the Texas Historical Association. A uh, membership with the association provides you with several different things, including access to the Southwestern Historical Quarterly and many other publications. But it also provides something free for everyone. You don't have to be a member of the Texas State Historical Association to use this resource. And it is essential for researching practically every subject in Texas history. I would advise starting with this and then going into Texas History Trust or Portal to Texas History to try to find out more or vice versa to get some background information. You go to this resource. It's, it's the Handbook of Texas online, and it is a digital state encyclopedia developed by the Texas State Historical Association that is free and accessible on the Internet for students, teachers, scholars, and the general public. Everybody can search this and use this. As the association website explains, quote, the handbook consists of overview, general and biographical entries focused on the entire history of Texas from the indigenous Native Americans and the prehistoric era to the state's diverse population and the modern age. These entries emphasize the role Texans played in state, national, and world history. The handbook website experienced 10,454,137 page views with 4,657,707 unique users from 201 countries and territories back in 2016. This is a good example of how Texas history really is a global interest and the handbook is an important Texas history resource. Now, the origins for the Handbook of Texas Online go back to 1939, a long time before the Internet was ever thought of, right? And it was the dream of University of Texas professor Walter Prescott Webb. And his dream was to preserve Texas history by creating, quote, the most useful book that has ever been published in Texas. Now, his leadership from 1939 on resulted in the publication of a two-volume handbook in 1952. And then in 1976, a third supplemental volume was released. Now, Webb himself admitted that the goal might be an impossible dream. But that dream turned into those first two volumes and then the third volume. And they were... A wonderful reference that I have personally relied on time after time in the past. But the history-loving people of Texas, realizing that it could be bigger and better, of course, went back to work and a massive update was organized. 
a lot of work by a lot of people resulted in the enormous 1996 publication of the six-volume Handbook of Texas. It contained 22,640 entries and 687 illustrations within its 6,945 pages. It is a Texas treasure. You can, if you are so inclined, sometimes find the six volumes for sale at some places like Half Price Books for the reasonable price of $75. That's what I pick mine up for. Six volumes for $75 with 6,945 pages of Texas history covering pretty much everything you could start to be interested in. Yeah, it's, it's a deal if you can find it at that price. I was very happy to say the least when I was able to get myself a copy a couple of years ago. Now, while the Texas State Historical Association might be focused on the past, its leadership has also had its eye turned to the future, and so it's set about digitizing the handbook and launched the Handbook of Texas Online in 1999. It was one of the first digital encyclopedias accessible for free on the Internet for the general public. There are now several thousand more entries on line available for everybody. And as the association explains on its website, these entries are written by volunteer historians and professionals reviewed by TSHA staff, vetted by scholars and approved by the TSHA chief historian before appearing online. The development of new entries is driven by current events, user suggestions, and internal identification of missing topics, which are reviewed by the chief historian for consideration. Existing entries are continuously revised and updated according to user suggestions and routine revision schedule. Authors utilize secondary and primary sources such as books, census records, newspapers, military service records, obituaries, diaries, and letters to craft historically accurate entries. The sources are compiled into a bibliography and updated regularly to provide readers with the most current scholarship. The handbook editors fact check, copy edit, and format entries using appropriate language for users ranging from middle school to college. And I wonder what resources are available that people writing for the handbook now have available. Oh yeah, Portal to Texas History and the Texas History Trust. In the past, you would have had to do a lot more work just to get the information you need. There are also several special online handbooks on a variety of topics like African Americans in Texas, the Civil War in Texas, Tejanos in Texas, the Texas Revolution, women in Texas, and music in Texas. Professor Webb's dream, which seemed impossible at the time, has definitely come true and continues to get better all the time. And it is an essential for the toolbox of everyone who wants to learn more about Texas history. Now, there is a link to the Handbook of Texas Online at texashistorylessons.com. Hopefully in the future, that links page on the website will be even more inclusive of great websites. Right now, you can go there and click and go straight to the Alamo website. You can go check out the Bob Bullock Texas State History Museum and its pages. You can click a link and go check out the Constitution of the State of Texas, East Texas Digital Archives. There's a link for Family Search Texas History. There's a link to Caronquas.com, Perry Castaneda Library Map Collection. I have a link there to the Portal to Texas History. There's a link to the Save Texas History website. There's also uh, Teaching Texas, Tejano Voices. The Texas Almanac provides a section on history you can click and go to. The Texas Archive of the Moving Image, which you definitely need to go check that out. It's amazing. Um, on and on and on. The Texas State Library and Archives is an amazing resource as well. You can click and find yourself looking at the West Texas Digital Archive, the Texas Historical Commission, TexasHistory.com, Texas Escapes. Texas Department of Transportation has a lot of information on archaeology and history. 
I could go on and on and on about all the many, many great things we have available today that make it more easy and give you the opportunity to find out really cool stories and things about Texas history that in the past, like I said, wasn't necessarily that easy. We really are in a golden age of information accessibility for those that want to keep learning. And that's one of the things I encourage with Texas history lessons. Yeah, I'm going to be sharing what I've found, but you can do it so easily by yourself now and go on and find out other cool things that you are interested in. With that being said, I can't help but add that this is no excuse to ignore the printed resources that are available. So I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back and I want to pay attention to some of the many, many printed resources that are available and extremely useful. Everything's not online yet, folks, and it's probably never going to be, but it, despite the great efforts of all these people I've talked about. So we'll be right back. To reiterate, we really are in a blessed time when it comes to the information that we have available at our fingertips, in our pockets, with our just carrying around with your phone what you can do and as i said but you can't forget about the printed resources that are available now at texashistorylessons.com i have a recommended reading page that is far from complete i have to admit that it is very very far from complete and it's missing several great books that should be added in the future i hope but it is a good starting point for those interested in checking out some good books from your library or buying them for your personal home library. Um, anything you can find by Herbert Eugene Bolton, I recommend getting it. If you can find a copy of his work, he was a pioneer in the Borderlands Studies of Texas. Dr. Bolton is a hero of mine. His work that he did on Borderlands history and Texas history are really great and I admire the work he's done uh, some of the other recommendations I have are some histories of Texas Rupert N. Richardson's Texas the Lone Star State has long been a standard of Texas history books and it's been through at least 11 editions you can find some of the older ones they've been changed and added to by other by other scholars really a good book to pick up the book I used in college in Dr. Cummins' class was Robert A. Calvert, Arnaldo de Leon, and Greg Cantrell's The History of Texas. I used uh, it in college in Dr. Cummins' Texas History class. It's a great book. The late, great Randolph B. Campbell of the University of North Texas, he wrote a great Texas history, Gone to Texas, A History of the Lone Star State. And he also, I might add, wrote a great brief biography of Sam Houston, and the must-read book on slavery in Texas and Empire for Slavery, the Peculiar Institution in Texas, 1821 to 1865. You can't go wrong with any book written by James L. Haley, especially his book, Passionate Nation, the Epic History of Texas, that came out, I think it was in 2006. It won the Fehrenbach Award for Texas Historical Commission. And he has a great biography of Sam Houston as well, which is appropriately titled Sam Houston, there's a nice little short book by Joby France, Texas, a history. And one that I really, really, really recommend is a book by my graduate advisor at the University of North Texas, A. Ray Stevens. Now, this book is Texas, a historical atlas, and it came out, I think, back in 2012, and it's an update to a 1990 atlas, a historical atlas of Texas. Basically, it's just expanded, updated with color images. The original from 1990 was black and white images, but it is a complete history of Texas in its own right, just with the visuals of maps, which is extremely useful and helpful in learning. Andrew J. Torgett. I think that's how you say his name. I might be getting that wrong. He uh, He's also at University of North Texas. There's a theme here. I don't know why. 
He has a great book on Texas history called Seeds of Empire, Cotton Slavery and the Transformation of the Texas Borderlands, 1800 to 1850. Highly recommend that. There's also a great book by Stephen Harrigan. He's not a historian per se. He's a journalist and essayist by trade, novelist, great writer. Uh, but he recently put out, I think it's 2019, University of Texas Press released Big Wonderful Thing, A History of Texas. It's a really, really good book. Uh, some of the other books I would recommend are uh, Ty Cashin's Lone Star Mind, Reimagining Texas History. Angela Boswell's Women in Texas History. Brian Edward Stone has a good book called The Chosen Folks, Jews on the Frontiers of Texas. Brian R. Chapman and Eric G. Bolin have a great book called The Natural History of Texas. Oh, another textbook that I came across is Texas Crossroads of North America. That's really, really great. That is by Jesus de la Teja. And de la Teja also has Lone Star Unionism, Dissent and Resistance. Other Sides of Civil War Texas that came out, yeah, I think it was in 2016. It's a good book. If you're interested in Galveston, Earl Wesley Fornell's The Galveston Era, The Texas Crescent on the Eve of Secession is a good book. William C. Foster has Historic Native Peoples of Texas. And in addition to that, has Spanish Expeditions into Texas, 1689 to 1768. Stephen L. Harden's great book, Texan Iliad, A Military History of the Texas Revolution, is a good place to go. Stephen Harrigan, that I mentioned, also has a book called A Natural State, Essays on Texas, that's worth checking out. And like I said, you can go see a list of these many, many, many books that are worth your time. I would also like to recommend... W.F. Strong's books. He has two volumes now, Stories from Texas. He's a great writer. You can also listen to him. And, uh, oh yeah, Lawrence Wright has a book called God Save Texas, A Journey into the Soul of the Lone Star State. That's well worth your reading time. And while I'm on a recommending streak, I have a couple more for you. If you are interested in Texas history, then this first one probably isn't necessary. But for the one or two of you that are unaware of the podcast, I encourage you to go and listen to the award-winning Texas History Podcast, Wise About Texas. Judge Wise loves Texas history. He loves Texas, and he cares for Texas history, and it's obvious in each episode. Likewise, as I mentioned, W.F. Strong has a great, originates on KUT 90.5 for Texas Standard, his show is Stories from Texas, and it's available online. Strong is a very strong uh, storyteller and shares compelling, interesting stories from Texas. And last but not least is the Wild West Extravaganza. And this podcast, Josh takes you on a wild and raucous ride through the history of the West. And sometimes he lands here in Texas, and he is just as dedicated as anybody I've mentioned to being thorough, caring for his sources, and trying to get it as good as he can and as accurate as he can. He's a great guy, and I really, really enjoy and look forward to see what he's going to do in the future with this podcast and other endeavors. These recommendations of Texas History Online sources and books and podcasts, I know, are far from complete, but they are a good starting point for anyone interested in exploring more on their own. If you have a resource or a book or a podcast that you love that I missed or just forgot to mention, you can always share them with me with an email to texashistorylessons at gmail.com. I don't always immediately answer the day I get it, but I always try to respond and that's going to do it today. In the future, we've got some more survey questions to go over and the answers that the many, many people have provided. And we're going to get back and look a little bit more into what does this mean when we talk about the myth of Texas and the myths of Texas. 
Sometimes there's some misunderstanding about what that means when people say that, when they're talking about the myths of the Alamo, the myths of Texas. Does that mean that we've been lied to all this time? No, is the short answer. That's not really what the myth and myths of Texas is about. And I'm going to get into that quite a bit in the next couple of episodes as we proceed. Thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks for people that have contacted me with supportive words and critiques and comments. I'm always open to that as well. As always, thanks to Derek McClendon for providing Walking Through History, the theme music for Texas History Lessons podcast. He's a great artist. And so please go check out his music and go see him as he's hitting up locations in Texas and Louisiana and hopefully beyond. He's truly a great artist and a great guy. Let's end this episode with a song by another great guy, Mondo Salas and his band Rosmond. This song is one of my favorites, Devil's River. Thanks again to everybody for listening. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Be kind. Adios.
Shit, quick. So guitar, she'll cry. 